Hi, I'm your host, Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and I'm really excited today to welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast all the way from Mexico, Inalyn Tonova, who's the CEO and founder of Digitarial Agency. She's additionally a founder of the co-working space Spring Hub, head of business development of Safety Wing, and she also has the highest rated affiliate marketing course on Udemy. Welcome to the Innova Buzz podcast, Enel, and it's a great privilege to have you as my guest. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Whereabouts in Mexico? I should have asked before we started recording. Whereabouts in Mexico are you? Yeah, so I live in Puerto Vallarta, uh, so it's uh, just down in the West Coast. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, city by the beach. <laughs> right, okay. So where's that in relation to Tijuana? It's in Yucatan, so yeah. it's you go a little bit more south. So basically, okay. yeah, we have direct flights to LA, to Texas, everywhere. So it's it's really close. Excellent, great. Well, <laughs> as people can probably guess, um, you run a remote career and you lead a women only team, which is fascinating, and I'm really keen to explore that some more. You're also a teacher, a speaker and a consultant and growing and launching businesses is your specialty. So lots to talk about today. Before we get on to all those things, what's the impact you're making in the world, Annalyn? Yeah, I would say that I have few, few missions, like some work-related, some personal. Um, one thing is definitely, yes, providing jobs for women all over the world uh, and giving them the same salary, whether they're working uh, from US, from Europe or South America or Asia or even India or wherever. Um, so this kind of like woman empowerment is definitely one of my topic and uh, being a woman entrepreneur by myself and a young woman as well have been going through different challenges and, um, and th that's definitely close to my heart. And uh, also the good thing with marketing agency is that I can pick my clients and if I can work with clients right now, for example, I, I have multiple like really cool clients who are doing really good things for, for the world with in health or uh, education or also solar connected with solar panels and so on. So through my services, I can also empower cool companies. And mm. then my own personal thing is that I really like animals and, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I am like a monthly donator and, and um, helping different kind of shelters around the world and stuff like that. That's my my own little thing <laughs> excellent great oh it's always nice to to um give back in different ways isn't it when when you're being successful yeah. so um Absolutely. yeah so let's talk about how did, how did you end up in a career where you're working from anywhere where you're remote in uh remote in uh, sorry where you're location independent <laughs> in remote locations Oh, how, yeah. how did that come about? Yeah, so I was, um, when I was young, I was studying a lot, working, all of that, trying to figure out my career and all of that. Everything looked like so, you know, pre-made and kind of something that I could project. And I was like, okay, the next step is that. And then the next step is that, so on. And it kind of felt so wrong to me. <laughs> and I was always like more curious. And so on. It's kind of funny today, like uh, I studied politics and governance and now today, like some of my classmates and so on are already like working like in parliament and all of that and everything. And I'm just like, I'm like, mm, I'm, I'm happy I made my own decisions and the lifestyle is totally different. Both, both everybody are really successful and happy, but the lifestyle is so different and I really like my lifestyle. And then. Yeah, but in this point, I was like feeling like somehow like my heart told me like this is not the way or the life I actually want to have later on. I want to be more free, living on my own terms. I want to discover more of the world. So I just, yeah, I left my uh, master degree. I never finished it, actually. And uh, and I left my job and I just went to travel. And I uh, went to Costa Rica, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, so on. And, and while I was doing that, I had like very limited amount of savings. And I had to figure out with around like three months that what I'm going to do, how I'm going to feed myself, how I'm going to get the roof <laughs> top of my head for and uh, or I have to fly back home. So, yeah, so pushing out myself in from my comfort zone and trying to figure things out, 
starting to literally Google how to make money online. I found like multiple ways. I was like, hmm, working in a cruise ship, interesting. What doing this, being a teacher. Oh, and then finally I found out this kind of like online platform platforms. And I started to uh, freelance in Upwork. So that was like, uh, yeah, almost like 10 years ago. And um, and there I started like to understand that what's the possibilities for remote work? What are the geeks there? What are the skills I need? I started to learn, to apply, like almost working for free at the beginning to get experience, some reviews, mm. and then it started to grow, grow, grow from there. Yeah, mm. So this is where it started. <laughs> Excellent. And, and yeah, that's... It's really great to see someone kind of take this approach of what what do I need to do, what skills do I need to build, and and also the the concept of actually working for free to build a portfolio or build experience is is something I think you don't see a lot of these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now hiring people, I feel like sometimes I'm like. Mm, I'm getting uh, getting sometimes people asking for the university they need to come to do some some like work, and then they already they're asking for the crazy prices. I'm thinking like, hmm, I wasn't like that ten years ago. That's interesting, <laughs> yeah. but we'll see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, and you talked um, about um, working with women all around the world. One of the cool things I think about um, location independent businesses and and remote teams is that that you have this kind of geographic independent pool of talent that you can hire from it doesn't matter where people live you're not restricted to the geography the business is located in and the talent that's available there you can hire all around the world is is that um was that your sort of thinking straight away when you started building your team well, I knew that I don't want the office and I don't want to be in an office. So, and I'm going to not pay for the office. <laughs> so office was not an option because I would never go there myself. Hmm. So that was naturally out because of how I am myself. So I wouldn't expect anyone else to act differently. If they want, they can work from home. But if they want and go to travel, they can. And that's their, their freedom. They're free to do so. Mm. All right. And with, um, so how big's the team now? So now we are uh, more than 10 people and mm. we're still hiring and like constantly, constantly, um, like every three months we grow, uh, like another person more or less is, is that the current, uh, current, uh, current speed with we are having, um, yeah, depends on also like what kind of how big projects we come in and then based on the project we hire and, and all of that to prepare. Hmm. Okay. And what what were some of the things you did early on growing that team up to 10 and, and continuing to grow it to build a sense in that remote team of, of being part of this team and working together in cooperation? And, and particularly, I'm interested in, in the culture. How do, how do you um, build the culture that, that you want in your company and in your team? Yes, I think it all starts already from the job post. So my job posts are like very short, very concrete, at the same time friendly with emojis, but it really highlights the type of people we want. Even if you have a, like a like a marketing experience, that's great. You have to have like some kind of like connection with marketing. Mm. But if you don't know anything about influencer programs, ambassadors, affiliates, it's fine. We can teach you. But what is the most important is that you have to be a fast learner. You have to be super uh, self-productive because I'm not there to hold your hand. Mm. I'm not there to like uh, check when you started to work or if you get, got things done, right? We are pretty much checking in a weekly basis and we have clear goals and KPIs. So they have to be like really independent and uh, being able to self-motivate and goal-based and uh, yeah, goal-oriented and so on. So this is pretty much, yeah, we, we already, everything starts already from hiring. We do fun stuff as well, like workshops and trainings and um, and all of these kind of things, sometimes like online games with the teams to get to know each other and so on. We even have had like summer days when we, we come together uh, with the team and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think 
all of this starts already before the culture starts before they already have arrived. Yeah, it starts yeah. from the job post and the person you and then you you everybody are on the same mindset. And many times also like um, I know like some some type of people they like to like really hang out with their coworkers and go to the cocktail bar later and then play video games and ch- chat chit chat and so on. Then there's type of people who don't want that. I'm one of them. <laughs> so it's not so much of like I have work and then I have my my own stuff and then I have family friends and so on and and I feel that like many of my team members are are similar that uh, we appreciate it so much that we get our things done and everything works and then everybody has so many hobbies like everybody are traveling every like we have like some fitness people work like crazy like in fitness <laughs> and stuff like that and then some gardening uh, people and pets and da 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 so it's like yeah i think in somehow like yeah this is i guess to describe our culture everybody are strong independent on the things they do and everybody working together to get things done and after we get things done we enjoy life yeah that's what yeah. i hope it is <laughs> sounds like a really fun environment yeah and good balance too mm-hmm. now you mentioned earlier about um the pay question and i wasn't quite sure were you referring to i mean there's two issues there isn't there there's there's the issue of um women not being paid commensurate with their male counterparts for a particular mm-hmm. job so mm-hmm. they're paid as women rather than as as a person doing that job and the other thing and I wasn't sure that whether you were going in this direction of you're paying you define a salary for the job and it doesn't matter where the person works they get that defined salary for that job that you've determined Actually, uh we have a even more interesting system. So <laughs> we have a ba- like base and we have like um so we have multiple roles, right? Like we have project managers and we have marketing assistants. So marketing mm. assistants do like uh, easier easier tasks and they are just um, uh, learning. And actually there's a possibility to grow from marketing assistant to project manager. And then you can actually lead the projects and actually have the client communication mm. and so on. Normally it takes a year, year and a half when I have seen that the people are like good to go and take, take on their own projects. And then they get the marketing assistant uh, to help them. Um, so we have the base prices for, the, for that. And then we have a motivational system because basically we have uh, systems worked out where you can do quite a bit of projects if you want to. So the all, um, if you're a project manager, you can either lead three projects or you can lead like I have been leading easily with the same systems, eight projects. And the more projects you take, the higher gets your salary. So then mm. we have this really like open, like I'm working on sales. And for example, today we just had the discussion that we, we have a new client starting today. And it was like, okay, who, who who wants to work on that project? And then people, they are open and open to say that like, yes, okay, I want to work with this project. So I'm like, okay. And then we raise the salary starting from today uh, because they take more responsibility. Mm-hmm. So it also works for every, everyone. Then again, we have a team member who is like, I have my own blog and my own stuff and I want to travel. I only want to work half time. I'm like, all right, yeah. let's do that. Like, no problem. So this kind of flexibility and being independent and on top of your own life, you can make decisions how much you want to work, how much you want to earn, how much you want to do, and all the possibilities are are, are there. Mm. Yeah, it's a, a really flexible model. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and they're all contractors. So uh, we have contracts with with each other, and they pay taxes wherever they choose to live, and all of that. And uh, and that's everything is also like super flexible. So hmm. people decide their their time, how much they want to work, how much they want to earn, where they want to work, when they want to work. The more main important thing is that. Um, we are, uh, and I think the only way why this system can run is that we have really clear goals and KPIs, and uh, except uh, like what our clients ex- expect from us, everything is like really clear. And then they know also, and from there we can do very clear working plans. So on a weekly basis, we know like what we need to do. But when, where, how you do that doesn't matter. But uh, the goals have to be reached. That they are mm. like we are really firm, and everybody are super responsible too. And everybody always like you know, make sure that the things get done because I think also they appreciate the other everything else that comes with it. You know, 
So to keep that system up, the goals have to be reached and then everything works nicely together. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I really like about that model from a business point of view is that you, um, you can increase salary and you bring people on board when you increase revenue. So if there's a new yeah. client comes in that generates a new project or a, a client that you're already working with says we, we have another need and that generates a new project, there's an increase in revenue and that's then basically used to share with the employee that doing, that's doing the work. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mm. felt that was the, because, you know, everybody expects the seller to grow always, but like, mm. yeah, I, I feel like let's do it together, you know, and like, and, and some people want to do more and some, some people are like crazy mm. overachievers and then you have to like, please somehow all both of them, right? Like people yeah. who want to do their job and then all good or, but you also have to have opportunities for overachievers or they're going to leave, but like That's you right. don't want hmm. to lose your overachievers, right? So then you have to like have to, this kind of system where you keep those, uh, uh, those overachievers also with you and then you can grow, grow together. Yeah. Hmm. Excellent. Now you mentioned earlier, or in fact, you mentioned a couple of times, I think systems and, and so Talk to us a little bit about some of the systems you have in your business and, and what's important about them. Yeah, I think this kind of learning I just had really recently. So when I started like doing everything like more structured and, and, and this kind of way, like a few years ago, then I was kind of like all over the place. I was like, uh, you know, because if you're building, let's say if you're an agency who builds websites, right? You can um, you can have clients who come to you and say like, I want Squarespace, I want Webly, I want WordPress, I want Shopify. And then you're like, sure, I'll do it. And then you do all of that, right? And you, you do a lot of websites and everything. And you have this kind of business. In my case, affiliate programs, influencer programs, we did that. So we were like, uh, we were working with uh, like with so many different kind of systems and and websites and so on because depends on what web website you have if you have a WordPress then I would work with affiliate or uh, VP or if you have Shopify I would work with uh, up promote or if you would have a subscription business I would work with uh, first promoter and so on refer uh, refer rock and so on so on so on so we had so many systems and all of that and it kind of started to uh, it's very hard to teach people when people change or come and so on because there's just so much mm. and it's hard to also optimize. So I'm literally now like really recent in this point where I only accept actually clients with Shopify. So e-commerce projects and uh, then we have a set of tools we use for them. So we use UpPromote uh, that works really well. We know the tool everything we know the support support knows us <laughs> we are like everything works everything is fast we have all the like you know um looms and and uh, teachings for our team members future team members done how everything works what we do why is, what is important so on and for the lead gen is also important uh, that we have like the tools we use for lead gen where we store the leads, how we reach out to them and how we can make like everything fa run really fast. That when I reach out to an influencer and say like, hey, do you want to, let's work together. We're representing this brand. Then it would go through the flow really fast that they can get their product. They can get all the marketing assets. They get the link code and they start posting and they start making revenue. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. And you, you mentioned their training. So part of the whole system is, is building training programs to bring people up to speed very quickly as they join the team. Yes. So, uh, we have, yeah, uh, we have, um, so now recently, yeah, only six months ago, I also hired the first time like a lead, lead up uh, HR slash HR. So now it's the first time I don't do any more on onboardings and it's like more professional. So yeah, we have like a training material, a welcoming material with like bunch of looms and everything and webinars and so on. And, and, um, how, how things work. Uh, I think the training is at least now, I think 30 hours easily mm -hmm. because it just added eight extra hours of recordings and things. And, uh, but after that, they start just do, uh, learning by doing, you know, they join one team 
and they already is and the rest the rest of the team starts giving them things and then they start picking up and picking up and, and go yeah. like yeah learning by doing is definitely uh one thing and and second is yeah that we always start to if there's something new we, a new tool or something we immediately while we learn it we already uh, document it and make sure that it's in the training material. Uh, so we're pretty serious about that. And that now helps us to onboard people really fast. Uh, so yeah, now like recently was, I, I got a really cool uh, uh, marketing assistant. And like in a few months, she's already good to go for a project manager because we had some projects coming in and she already like learned everything and had to had to get going faster than, than we, we, we thought, <laughs> but uh, thanks to the materials and things, it seems that it's working out nicely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there's a, there's a really important point there. I think that's, um, that's something that every business can benefit from is, is recording videos and training materials and repurposing webinars that you do as training mm-hmm. materials because it, it saves so much work, doesn't it, in terms of training new staff and, and also they can, as you highlighted with that example, that they get up to speed very quickly and um, they also feel taken care of because there's, as soon as they, they join the company, there's all this material and resource available for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also having like an extra person actually like who is responsible on that people would be happy and 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 they would have everything they need for their work. So that was like a yeah, like when I hired my HR lead up and I was like thinking like after after some time I was like, Why well, didn't do it earlier? <laughs> Sometimes you feel like when you're like a solo founder that oh, okay, you like you're used to do everything, you know? And then you are like five people and then I waited almost eight uh, or like eight, nine people to have that role. But I'm thinking maybe I should actually have that done earlier. So then I could already give those onboardings and hiring and everything already previously away. And I could actually have my time focused on sales, mm. which is the only source that the, pretty much the company grows, right? Because nobody else pretty much does sales than I do right now. So, so yeah, a thought for solo founders that like, yeah, I think it's good to have like some kind of self-reflection sometimes and see that uh, maybe it's the point uh, where you need help when you need to like, if you're doing something that starts to repeat itself a lot and maybe there's other, prof- I'm not the HR person. I don't know actually even yeah. how to hire. So <laughs> it's like, uh, let, let professional professionals do that and I'll do the marketing stuff and then do the sales. And then now it's getting, everything is getting up to speed and faster. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's a really important point. Uh, focus on your own strengths and, and as soon as you can hire, hire some of those really key roles. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I think that's a really good point now to move on to the buzz, which is our innovation round. Same five questions I ask of every guest. And Mm -hmm. the idea is that you'll give answers that will inspire the listener to go and do something awesome as a result today. Um, So are you ready? I'm ready. Always ready. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. You were born ready, right? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah. What's the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Yeah. So I think uh, stop copying and comparing. Um, I think comparing is something that people do all the time. They don't even think, but they're like, oh, mm. but what if I would do similar? Uh, no, there's no similar and, and stopping. Like you have to like stop copying or even comparing and even thinking like about others. And also I think stop worrying. I think that's what like keeps many people uh, back. You know, they are like, oh, but what if I fail and, and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, not to worry and, uh, and uh, don't, don't think about what others do and compare with yourself and you are, you are on your own and you have your own ideas to, to try. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. The, the idea, I think people, um, look at others and there's this concept of modeling and you can learn from a model, but when it, it, it that often don't recognize that boundary of when am I copying this person? When am I sort of abdicating, bringing in my own ideas and my own personality into that? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important point. All right. What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Yeah. So I think that came um, 
one of my clients safe doing and uh, they have like a very strong cu- company cu- uh, culture as well and we have talked about it a lot and um, and what we have been talking uh, there as a company like culture and so on uh, is that uh, it's okay to fail and uh, and uh, because if you are scared to fail then you are scared to do anything and try out anything. So basically we are like, you have to be totally fine and celebrate uh, any kind of like uh, mistakes and fails and so on, because with that, at least you did something and you learned and you know how you, you're after every fail, you know what to do next for sure. Like, because you already have much more experience and you know exactly what went wrong and all of that and and then you you can keep going so to remove like to just to celebrate any kind of uh, mistakes fails and all of that uh, not to judge others not to feel judged by yourself and just uh, accept it and move on uh, hmm. so yeah i think yeah, that just yeah. to know that it's, it's okay to fail totally okay hmm. part of the game yeah i like to think of it as uh, an experiment based on my science background an experiment where you have a postulate and often that postulate is proven wrong by the experiment. And so you learn something and the next postulate is, is based upon what you've learned previously. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. All right. Well, do you have a favorite resource you use most often? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that question, like resource uh, for innovation. And then I understood that actually I have a really good answer that comes from inside me. <laughs> so basically I was thinking like where I actually get new ideas or like inspired and so on. For me personally, it's traveling, like meeting new people, especially new cultures when I change like, you know, drastically continents Mm. and then you really like change your mind. Like something happens when it's like you go to a totally new culture and and you you are totally new time zone, new, uh, you eat different food, you meet totally new people. And and then Mm. like, I feel it like it's really like experiencing life in so many different possible ways as, as possible that's really helps to open the mind and expand your mind. And that really like liberates you from like what's normal, so Mm. to say, and it helps you to be more creative because the more you travel, the more explore and the more you're open-minded, that's like super helpful for doing uh, new things without any boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. And it's important, as you said, uh, being open-minded and being curious about, uh, why things are the way they are in this different environment. I know from mm-hmm. uh, my corporate career, I used to travel a lot for work and, and it wasn't just um, immersing in the culture and and the environment. It was also in business, actually going into businesses, um, into factories, into offices oh. and, and really understand, oh, okay, it, it sort of things happen differently here. <laughs> I wonder why that yeah. is. And, yeah. Yeah, I wish everybody would have this kind of experience. Can you hmm. imagine like uh, how it, the world would be if everybody would like have really open minded and then so on? I mean, people would be so much different because it really makes you also more friendly. Like if you understand more cultures, you know, um, I mean, different religions and everything. If you if you understand better, we, we would definitely also have less conflicts. Hmm. Yes, absolutely. All right. Now, what's the best way to keep a, a project on track? Yeah, that's easy because I'm really, really into that. <laughs> Expert in that, yeah. <laughs> yes. So clear goals, uh, very uh, clear uh, uh, clear goals ha- help you to also have like clear uh, like sub goals and tasks and KPIs under it, right? And then for all of these, what if you have defined them, you have to have very clear also deadlines. So from there, it comes like a timeline and then you can you can analyze, okay, is it actually doable? If everybody are okay with that. And now one of the most important, if you have a task and a deadline, then for each task and deadline, you also have to have a person name behind it. So then everybody clearly also knows who does what by which which time has to be done. And then you just keep checking in weekly basis. And then uh, if people are responsible and do their things or um, then uh, it should work well. And if there's any kind of blockers, then they come out in the weekly check-ins and the team or everybody can come together and unblock that. Mm. 
Excellent. So sort of it, it's a bit of classic project management, but the communication part there and, and regular check-ins I think is important as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We also report weekly to our clients, which for actually agencies normally do monthly summaries and hmm. especially more like bigger and but we have like more we have like smaller and mid sized clients. So we are like really like uh, connected all the time and, and sometimes we have even like daily Slack uh, communication with our clients and we weekly mm. we report weekly. So we're really hands on like all the time. Um, and we also, I think what makes us different also that we only accept rather bigger projects, not smaller. So then we are and can be more hands on and then we can actually um, give bigger impact as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's a, a really good approach to have that regular communication. Some people think that, um, if I have nothing to report, then no communication, but it's often better just mm. to say everything's on track, nothing to worry about, just letting you know. Yeah, and yeah. Then, Absolutely. then not saying anything. Yeah. All right. And what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Yeah. Well, this one I was thinking and I wasn't really sure. I think uh, maybe um, it comes out, it's, it's, I mean, if, if I would say a concrete answer, then it wouldn't be something so different for everyone, right? I think it comes something from your own heart hmm. that uh, you feel that is your thing or uh, feels like you. So it's really hard something to describe as a thing or, or something like very specific. I would say like it's a, it's a, you know, like sometimes people would say that, ah, this is really, really like something what Jurgen would do. You know, and how you explain that? It's not something concrete. It's a thing, or it's a feeling, or it's mm. uh, it's sometimes like uh, the tone of voice, or or just being you, you know, or the touch of a person, or the hug, or or the way people joke, or something like that. So um, I think just those little simple things that make make us who we are. Um, that uh, I can't really like tell exactly what they are, but I think you know what I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it comes back to being yourself. It, it's it's consistent with what you said earlier about not copying or not comparing. And mm. so, again, people try to take on a different persona because they think that that might work in their business or so on, and it's so foreign to them and it costs so much energy. And they come across as insincere as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree All right. With that. Well, this has been fabulous, Enelin. Really enjoying the conversation. Now, where can people find out more about you and the work you do about digitarial agency and maybe even get in touch and say thanks for what you've shared? Yeah, absolutely. So digital agency is in LinkedIn and also just digitalagency.com, our website. And I'm in LinkedIn as well, in Alin Toneva, and you can find all the links also from there. So I'll drop you the links later. Thank you Excellent. so much for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Now, finally, what action would you like our listener to take out of today's conversation? Yeah, I think that... Um, so if, if mostly the topic was about remote uh, work, I would just encourage that if you aren't today happy with your current work or, or your career and so on, I just want to tell you that there's so many possibilities out there and it's never too late to make a change. Um, so, so yeah, look around Google a little bit. There's so many blogs and even like specialists in HR who help people to find remote jobs. Um, like remote job coach and so on. Um, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of possibilities. It's just only if you want to. And if you really want to, I'm sure you can make it happen to have like a really good uh, dream lifestyle that you deserve. Excellent. All right. Well, that's a good call to action. So um, <laughs> have a look at the possibilities if you're looking for a change. All yes. right. Well, thanks so much for sharing your time and your insights with us so generously today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Uh, uh, we didn't get on to some of the fun places you've traveled to, but maybe we should do a, a fun podcast just talking about all the different places we've both visited and, and sharing some notes yes. about that. <laughs> That's fun. Sounds yeah. good. All right. Thanks a lot, Enel, and have a um, wonderful future and all, all the best. Let's keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care.